tonight on Access TV. It's got them coming on live. Get ready to laugh with Chris Monty, Ilan Altman, Yamanika Saunders, Michael Somerville. This week's host, Tom Arnold. Gotham Comedy Live, all happening right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Arnold! Oh, welcome to Gotham Comedy Live! I just found, Gotham Comedy Live is the name of the show. I just found out it is fucking, like we're live on the air right now. I had no idea. My wife is home, hi Ashley. It's like having a fucking nanny cam on me at all times. Usually she has to go to Twitter to follow my movements, but tonight, oh my gosh. And by the way, Twitter, do you do Twitter? You know, Twitter is, uh, it's, it's great and everything, and I do it, but you gotta be careful. Be careful what you say about people, because we have feelings. And this happened, I was at Super Bowl a couple years ago at New Orleans, and I go into the bathroom, I have this thing before I go on stage where I just kinda check it out. I'm not gonna pee or nothing, I'm just checking it out to see how disgusting I am. And I, I do my thing, and then I get ready to go on stage, and I, for fun, check my Twitter feed, and I swear it says, OMG, Tom Arnold does not wash his hands in the bathroom. <laughs> Listen, you can fucking murder someone in Hollywood, but if you don't wash your goddamn hands, you're out, okay? That's disgusting. So I'm like, hold the show. I gotta fix this. So I go back in the bathroom, and it's like, uh, both the Manning brothers are in there. It's a Super Bowl. Uh, Aaron Rodgers is in there with his brother. There's some kind of brother thing going on. And about 20 other guys, I go, listen, fuckers, I don't know who just tweeted that I don't wash my goddamn hands, but let me tell you something. I didn't pee or anything, so technically I did not have to wash my hands, but I am washing them right now in front of you assholes. Please retweet that I wash my hands, okay? Please. Listen to me. I don't, that's disgusting. And when you've been divorced three times, you do nothing disgusting. I am super clean. I don't do anything in front of my wife that can be taken. I don't fart anywhere near my wife. I fart outside. I used to be cocky. I used to fart on my first wife. I thought that was funny. It's... It's not, oh my gosh, well, uh, it's great. The first time, this when I realized this is live, like many years ago, the first time I hosted Saturday Night Live, which happened its 40th anniversary this week, which that's cool, right? And uh, you dream your whole life, you want to host Saturday Night Live, right? And then it, you're behind the door, and then the great Don Pardo is counting down 10 seconds for that door to open, and you to be live on TV, and you're like, what the fuck was I thinking? Oh my God, I'm going to ruin everything. I'm going to go out there and just lay down. Everybody will hate me. I'm not worried about that anymore because I got a baby. That guy fucking loves me. I can lay down right now. He wouldn't care. He loves me that much. It's unconditional love. He's just happy to have me. You need one person in the world that loves you unconditionally, right? Everybody, it takes the pressure off. I know it's going to end when he's a teenager, but I'll be like 90 years old then. I'm not worried about it. Oh, my God, that journey for thy son. It's a, it was such a long journey. So many people involved. 23 years. I have a very minuscule sperm count, and, which... You know, when I, was, when I went to the University of Iowa, this is how I found out I had a low sperm count. Uh, I used to donate blood and plasma, get seven bucks for beer money, you know, we do that all the time. Yeah, yeah, I go to separate hospitals because they'd be on to you, you can only donate so much. And then I was like praying to God, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life, I said, I need a sign. And there it was, I worked at the hospital school and there was literally a sign that said, donate sperm, $35. I was like, holy hell. That is God speaking to me. I will do that. I will do that three times a day. That's $105. I can't even... Holy shit, I have a towel under my bed right now that's worth five grand. I know this is like... I'm so excited. My roommates, six of us, we piled down there, and they're like, slow down. We have to test your sperm first and, and, uh, before we take you in this program. And, and then <laughs> it's like, well, it feels fine. But okay, so they come back, and the doctor pulls me out of the herd. He's like, he was very sad. He's like, Mr. Earl, that's some terrible news. You cannot be a part of our program because you don't have enough swimmers. And I was like, what are, how many swimmers do I have? And he's like, three. And I was like, well, that seems pretty good. What does your average man have? And he's like, three million. I was like, no, don't fuck with me. Seriously, how many? He goes, no, I don't fuck with anybody. I have no sense of humor. Three million is how many are. So at that moment, I knew I could not get a woman pregnant the regular way. And, th and, and that was sad, but it's also good news because I'm old. I went to school before these terrible viruses. So like at bar time, I would be like, hey, listen, please sleep with me. I cannot get you pregnant. The worst case scenario, I sweat on you. You get a stab infection. You know what I mean? Like, so... Anyway, 20 feet, so I started when I was 30, got married for the first time, wanted to have a kid. And it became a problem for the poor woman. It's my physiological issue. Poor woman has to t get on all the hormones. And, do, you know, we do that in vitro fertilization thing. I did 23 rounds of that with four different wives, so it's not weird. I had four different wives. 
And it never happened. When I met Ashley, I love, I, I'm so lucky to have this. I met Ashley, I said, listen, we can't, let's adopt. It's not going to happen the regular way. You know, and she's like, okay, okay. And then she's like, well, let, let's just try. And so, you know, it's so sad because it doesn't work out, you know, and I know that from my history, but anyway, we tried three times and then we went back and she finally got it. It's not going to work. We're going to adopt. We, you, and we go to the doctor, the, the fertility doctor, to kind of say goodbye. This guy's been with me 25 years, man. <laughs> He's tried everything. And my, and my poor wife. And my wife is sitting there openly weeping. And guys, what is scarier than having your wife weeping? There is nothing on the planet. You ever walk in the house and she's weeping? You're like, holy fuck, did I do that? Hold on. <laughs> Even if I didn't, I gotta fix it because fucking sports center is on in two minutes. Oh my god, what is going on, honey? So she's weeping. So I go to the doctor. I'm like, oh my god, I gotta. So I started showboating a little bit. I'm like, yeah, you know, it's too bad. Ashley's had like seven procedures. It's too bad there's not something you can do with the man because when, when science catches up with that, I will be back in here and I will do it. And I will. And the doctor's like, actually, Tom, there is a new procedure we're doing on the man. I was like, okay, well, I'll do it t tomorrow morning. What? What is that procedure? And he's like, well, we make an incision into your scrotum, we pull your testicle out, we take a sperm right from there <laughs> in case it's your tubing. I was like, come here, fucker. Okay, listen. <laughs> God damn it. Run this shit by me in the hall. God damn it. I was showboating for my old lady over there. Now I gotta get my nuts cut open. You know it's not gonna work. I know it's not gonna work. And she's like, would you really do that, honey? I'm like, hell yes, I would do that. Sometimes you gotta get your nuts cut open just to prove, you know? <laughs> just to prove you're in this thing. Plus, let's be honest. If you're in recovery, surgery, is a snow day because there's a certain point right before they start cutting. They're like, uh, now, Mr. Arnold, we're going to give you something to relax you. And you're like, hell fucking yes, you're going to give me something to relax me. And they give you a shot of something called Versed. Let me tell you, it lasts about 30 seconds, but it's the best 30 seconds of your life. You suddenly have a full head of hair, six pack abs, no ex wives. People love your movies. <laughs> it is worth getting your nut sack cut open. So, what happens is, they come back for this thing and they say, we, we literally found one sperm and, and, and it's not enough to juice your wife up and have her go through all the stuff to make 15 eggs. She got it. We met with the adoption lawyer. We're walking out. We get a call for the fertility clinic. They're like, hey, we're cleaning out the refrigerator, your ice cube tray or wherever we keep this stuff. We got your one sperm and we happen to have one of her eggs left. You know what we're going to do? We're going to put them together in a dish. They will not multiply, but then we'll say we did everything humanly possible. We're like, great. Three days later, they call back. They are multiplying. Don't get, don't get psyched up because it's not gonna work, but we're gonna, if your wife wants to come down, we'll, we'll you put it back in the, in the hopper, you know, we'll put it back in there. They won't stick. Anyway, then a month later, like, you're pregnant, but don't tell anybody, it's that kind of pregnant. You're like, you're not really, you know, two months, three months, now I think they're fucking with me. Cause they know, I know, I've been blessed in many ways, but I'm not gonna be blessed in this way. So the strain keeps going on, then there's a heartbeat, then there's an ultrasound, the, this baby looks like me with extra clay all over it, you know, and I know it's bullshit. Finally, it comes time to go to the hospital. I, I mean, they kept this lie going. I was like, this is going to be devastating. They're like, okay, and I'm looking, for, I'm looking for a crack in their story. And they say, oh, the baby is breached. Everything is fine. But your wife has to have a C-section. I was like, here's where they, here's where they bring in the other baby, which is fine. I'm in show business. Bring in a, I don't care what kind of baby. You don't give me one of Shaquille O'Neal's babies. He's my next door neighbor. I'd love to have one of his babies. I just want a baby. And they're like, sir, you want to stand behind the curtain where, where in front of your wife. You don't want to see this. I go, uh, you, A, you're wrong. One, I worked in a meatpacking plant for three years. Two, I don't believe this is actually happening. And if I don't watch this. I'll never believe it. And uh, I watched it, and it was amazing. And I have a, a perfect son now who loves me unconditionally. His name is Jax. He is perfect. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And that's why I lost 100 pounds, because you can't be a super fat dad and a super old dad. You can be, and I'm super old. So I got to be able to play with this kid. Listen, you guys are great. This is fun, right? This is fun and exciting. All right. We're going to be coming back. We have great, four great comics, so get excited. It's going to be a short break, so come right back, everybody. Thank you. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Chris Monty is taking the stage when we return. This is live. We're live on the air. Let's get the, the real comedy started. This guy is in Mall Cop 2, which is coming up. Chris Monty. Chris. Thank you. How are you? Good? Are you done with winter? I'm done with winter. You know what? I'm, I'm more done with the fact that my neighbors say the same question every day. Cold enough for you? 
No, it's not cold enough for me. I like when both my testicles are lodged in my throat. That's cold enough for me. I want to spit and have it freeze. That's my kind of cold. This is not cold. This is a tease. It is, uh, I'm just glad the holiday season's over, right? The holiday season's like, I just feel like that whole period between Thanksgiving and Christmas, you're just locked up inside with people you hate, right? It's, you know, family. And it's just awful. Because I, I am, I, for those holidays, they're terrible for me. I'm not married. I don't have kids. Drink up, ladies. I get better looking as the show goes on. But if you come from my family, you know, when you get to a certain age, no kids, no wife, you're suspect. And I gotta hear the discussions. So all the women gather, all the hens, da, 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 da. All the aunts, all the cousins are all in the kitchen and the drunk you get, the less you know how to whisper. I think I can't hear them in there. What's the matter with him? Get got too far. He can't find someone already. Not a bad looking fella. Maybe he's gay. I am not good looking enough to be gay, first of all, okay? That's not funny, don't laugh at that. It's different today, man. This is a different world that I grew up in. You can't just go out to a club or a bar and meet a girl. You gotta be online now. That's where everybody, we do everything online, even meet people, dating websites. And I'm online, and I got a tip for anybody who's dating online. Update your profile picture. You sh I should be able to recognize you when you walk into the restaurant. That's all I'm saying. Because everybody lies. I have been the victim of false advertisement time and time again. Because for those of you who aren't online dating, if you're hooked up already, good for you. It's just like Facebook. You put pictures up there of yourself and you what you like, what you don't like. And then body type comes up. Oh, body type comes up. And it says slim, thin, fit, athletic, curvy. That's a tricky word right there, curvy. <laughs> Girls, I never knew how tricky that word was. The big difference between curvy and holy cow. Look at that. Wow, that's a lot of person. That's a big girl coming to me right now. That's, that's a globe with feet is what that is. I don't know if I have enough money to feed her. I might have to hit the ATM on this one. That's a refrigerator with a head. I wonder... I wonder if she ate the girl that was gonna meet me tonight. I don't, I don't think that's the person I've been talking to all week online. I don't think so. And I'm not picking on you girls. I'm not picking, I love all women. I love all shapes, sizes, ages, ethnic background. I don't care. Just let me know what I'm getting. You're right, don't tell me you're selling me a compact car. And I show up to the lot and it's a friggin' boat. I'm gonna be a little upset. Because I don't lie, I don't lie at all. You go to my dating profile and it's all real. It's what I look like right now. And the description will say, tall, thin, receding hairline, big nose, huge penis. It's all there. <laughs> and the holidays brings all of that. It brings all of that discussion. See that, all of that discussion. Once, you know, I gotta go through that pressure. I just like, give me the summertime. There's no pressure in the summertime, right? Summertime, you're not inside with these people. You're outside, you're barbecuing. Fourth of July, best holiday on the calendar, Fourth of July. What happens on Fourth of July? Your friends call you up, like, yo, come over, we're barbecuing. Come over. We're gonna barbecue. You're like, yes, what do I bring? Can I bring something? Like buns, can you get buns? We're running low on buns. I go to Costco right now, I'm gonna skid of buns. How many buns do you need? You do 4,000 buns? I'll have a truck back up in your driveway at two o'clock. Buns are here. We're like, get beer, can you get beer? I'll get every kind of beer they make. I don't care, I'll get dark beer, light beer, summer ale, winter ale, I don't care, no pressure. I hate the ice people though, don't you hate that? Can you bring ice? What, are you, you don't have a running water in a freezer in your house? <laughs> I go to the Quick Mart now, pay 75 bucks for two bags of ice? Cause you didn't plan for your party? Hope I get there before it melts? Right, you're walking in with bags of water? There was traffic, sorry, I don't know. I had the air on, but it wouldn't keep. I, I, Too much pressure. <laughs> get older now. The older you get, you just know what you want. What you don't. I don't want to fight with women anymore. I don't want to fight with your girls. I want to fight. Just next relationship I have, let me know when you're done yelling. I'll be in a garage. <laughs> I don't want to fight. Men and women fight too much about just too many things. We do because we're not on the same page, not the same wavelength. We have different brains. That's what I've I've come to learn. We have God made very different brains for men and women. Women different brain. The man brain simple, right? Little piece of machinery with a switch on and off. That's it. <laughs> women, he ran out of switches when he made your brain. You're always on. You can't shut off. You don't know how to shut off. You're just not built to shut That's true. I've been on the stage for a couple of minutes talking to you. In that time, every woman in this room has a million other things popping through their head while they're watching the show. You're sitting here watching the show. You go, this is so much fun. Tomorrow's Friday. I like to work tomorrow. Then another on the weekend. The next week at the wedding, I go, oh my God, I got to that wedding. Who gets married in the middle of February? It's going to be so cold outside. This is my best friend. I do love her. I got nice dress. It's going to be like, horrible. And hang out. And she wants to take pictures outside. I'm going to take pictures outside. She can take pictures outside. She can go outside. She can get married in the summer. She wants to take pictures outside. I don't care what it looks like to do this And then we got Easter at our house. I'm going to eat this year. 30 people coming over. I got to make a whole menu. And if my sister in law thinks she's going to come over and sit on the couch and not help me, she's going to help me. I'm going to help me. I'm going to help me. Get up. And then, oh, oh my God.
That's a woman's mind. Men don't think like that. Right, men? We save our energy for one good thought a day. Maybe. Men have a switch on and off. Usually it's off. But you've seen your man shut it off, girls. You've seen him come home, plop down on the couch. The TV's not even on. He's looking at a blank screen right now. Because he don't care. Because in that moment, the shop is closed. But it's not closed for long, is it, fellas? No, because here comes a shop steward around the corner. What are you doing in there? What are you thinking about? <laughs> nothing. <laughs> women do not comprehend nothing. The men are laughing, the women ain't laughing. They... <laughs> nothing, we just want silence, that's all we want. We love you girls, we love you. We just want you to shut up for five minutes. <laughs> That's all we want, five minutes of sound. There's a couple that I grew up next door to. And a uh, great couple, they were like in their 80s at one point. They were married 60 years, this is true. And, and the husband got sick and he's in the hospital and the wife goes to the hospital every night and she visits him every, and then he dies one night. She drives all the way home, she gets into bed, she goes to sleep and she dies in her sleep, same night, right? <laughs> See, when you hear women, ah. Oh. <laughs> Do you notice not one man made a peep? <laughs> You know why? Because every man in this room knows exactly what I know, that that man died. He got on his cloud in heaven. And he was like. Woman got on that cloud, I'm like, oh my god, this is our cloud, this is wonderful. Yeah, we have a big cloud. I'm gonna put the furniture tonight. My man married, she married a month ago. Oh my god, she got, I'm gonna have her over next week. We're gonna have lunch. Oh my god! I don't want that, man. I wanna, I wanna keep it. You know what I like? I like when it's new. That's what I like. I like when it's new. When you first meet someone and it's new. Remember all the couples out here? Remember when you first met someone and you had hope? <laughs> remember in the beginning, it's nice because you're in love and you hold hands and you talk, you shower together. Remember when you shower together? Remember when you wanted to shower together? <laughs> That's great when you're new, right? It's like, come on, baby. You wash me and I wash you. It don't stay like that, does it? No, go home tonight, take a shower together. It's like, will you move, your fat ass? You're hogging all the hot water. I'm shriveling up over here and freezing to death. Whose stupid idea was it to drink a bottle of wine and take a shower together? I got a pee and I'm not getting out. Move over. Thank you, I'm Chris Monty. God bless you. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Elon Altman is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. Yes, welcome back, everybody. Let's keep it rolling, right? This next guy's amazing. Alon Altman. Alon Altman. TV debut. This is debut, right? First time. Thank you. Oh my God. Thank you guys so much. I'm so happy you guys are here. I know a lot of you are visiting from other places. And I think one of the great things about New York is that we have so many visitors from foreign countries. Woo! Except that like that guy. <laughs> Except that sometimes there can be misunderstandings because of the language barriers. That's why I always warn my female friends. I say, if you're going out somewhere and you're talking to a European guy and he tells you that he has a hairpiece, he's not saying that he's wearing a toupee. <laughs> hairpiece is just the way that he pronounces herpes. <laughs> I have a hairpiece. Would you like to see? <laughs> you look like my wife. She has hairpiece too. <laughs> a lot of people come to New York, they live here for a few months, and they start calling themselves New Yorkers. And that bothers me because I'm a real New Yorker, you know? I was born in New York. I went to school. Right. I went to school in New York. Yeah. One guy went to school in New York. <laughs> the first girl I ever had sex with, from New Jersey. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, New York girls are beautiful. The New Jersey girls, they are easy. Yeah. 
Usually you can tell where the Jersey girls are because I'll make some kind of moaning noise at that point to show that they disapprove of the stereotype and because that's the noise that sluts make. <laughs> so like I said, I went to school here. I went to public school. And uh, you know, public schools in New York are kind of rough. Like every year we'd have these police officers come to our classroom and they would tell us not to do drugs, not to join gangs. And they'd always try to scare us by saying that if we went to prison, we were going to get raped every night by our 300-pound cellmate. <laughs> And it was always about a big fat guy raping you. Like this was the worst case scenario. But I've been thinking about it. <laughs> and if I had to get raped in prison, I would prefer the 300 pound guy because he's gonna be out of breath in about 10 seconds. <laughs> that's not so bad. I mean, as far as prison rape goes, that's like your best case scenario. The worst case would be if your cellmate was Sting. <laughs> Because it is common knowledge that Sting practices tantric sex. So now you're talking about a 12-hour rapathon. Which might not be that bad if he sings to you while he's doing it. I mean, I would normally never condone prison rape. But it is really hard to get Sting tickets. Might be worth it. It would be the ultimate pain and pleasure situation. You'd be like, oh my god, this hurts so bad. But I think Roxanne's coming up next. I love that song. That joke never really works with black audiences. And I think it's because Sting was the lead singer of The Police. <laughs> and black people don't like 80s British rock. <laughs> so it's February, which is Black History Month. And every time it comes around, my black friends always complain about how it's not fair that Black History Month is the shortest month of the year. <laughs> But I think they should look on the bright side because some groups have it much worse. You get an entire month to celebrate great black men, but there's only one measly week to celebrate great white sharks. <laughs> That's not fair. Someone once told me that joke was a little offensive, but I want you to know I can tell that joke because some of my best friends are black sharks. Yeah. There actually are black sharks. That's a real species of shark, okay? I did research for that joke. <laughs> Proud of myself. Interesting side note, if you go to Google and type in black sharks, you will see a lot of pictures of Denzel Washington doing West Side Story. <laughs> so uh, my name is Alan, and that's an unusual name, so people always misspell it and mispronounce it. And that always gets me trouble when I go to places like Starbucks. Because at Starbucks, you've got to give them your name when you order a drink, and they always screw it up. So I try to help them out. You know, the guy at the register asked for my name. I'll spell it for him. I'll say it's E-L-O-N. Four letters, simple enough. Until I got my cup back, there were 14 letters written on it. <laughs> and I realized that guy didn't think I was saying the letters E-L-O-N. He thought E-L-O-N is how I pronounce my name. <laughs> Yellowen. <laughs> like I'm a Norwegian pop star. <laughs> what kind of name is Yellowen? But I gotta give credit to this guy. I admire the confidence that he had in his own abilities. Because this guy heard the name Yellowen. But he didn't ask me to repeat it, didn't ask me to spell it out. He was just like, Yellowen? I got that. Let's see. I L L. Three, no, four Y's in a row. Circle with a line through it. Backwards N. Hashtag blessed. Nailed it. But even if the first guy can spell Alon correctly, I still have to deal with the next person who has to read that name out loud in order for me to get my drink. And that's like a whole other problem. Because when I go to Starbucks, I am there to get my favorite drink in the world. The venti mocha frappuccino with whipped cream and a hazelnut drizzle the girliest drink on the menu. So under normal circumstances, it's a little embarrassing to be seen with that drink. But it's extremely embarrassing when I have to pick up my girly drink from the guy calling out, Ellen? <laughs> Ellen? I got a mocha frappuccino for some lady named Ellen. But the worst part of the whole thing is when I go to get that drink and look at the faces of the people around me because they're all like this. As if they're thinking, yeah, that could be a woman. 
Lesbian haircut, girlish arms, definitely a chick. Thank you. But you know, I, I, I get it, I'm a skinny guy, I'm not very masculine, but I feel self-conscious about being skinny. But I think that's normal. I think most people feel a little bit self-conscious or uncomfortable with their physical appearance. Really, only one group of people always talks about how proud and comfortable they are with their bodies, and that is fat women. <laughs> And I never understood that. But the other day I was on the subway and a fat lady sat next to me. And that's when I realized fat women are comfortable with their bodies because they feel like pillows. I put my head down, took a nap. It was good. But I think it's good that these ladies have, uh, you know, high self-esteem because so many people feel bad about their bodies. You know, like men, for example, a lot of them worry about things like uh, penis size. And really, men should not worry about that because I saw a survey in a magazine that said 80% of women don't care about a guy's penis size. That's not true. No. That lady said, that's not true. She must be from New Jersey. But the thing is, 80% of women don't care about penis size because 80% of women aren't that attractive. <laughs> Just have realistic expectations. That's nice. You can probably tell by now I'm not very good at talking to ladies. Um, that's really because I've been in with my girlfriend for a number of years. And uh, because of that, I try to live vicariously through my single friends. And what I've noticed is that some of my single friends are kind of creepy when it comes to dating. Like my one friend, he's a creep because he only dates girls that are several years younger than him. And when it comes to the age difference in a relationship, there's a thin line between what's acceptable and what is wrong. But he said he uses a mathematical formula to decide if a girl's old enough for him to date. The way it works is he takes his age, divides it by two, and adds seven. And as long as a girl can do that math. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, guys. My name's Alain Altman. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Yamanika Saunders is taking the stage when we return. You like oxygen? The network? This is the funny girl, Yamanika Saunders. up here. <laughs> fuck them, okay? Fuck them. Yeah, you know, fuck these dudes. Seriously, no, I'm sick of this fucking fat shaming. You, sir, fuck you, okay? I got a fat puss. I'll put it on your goddamn face. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Sorry, sir, I haven't eaten today. I'm hungry. That's what it was. I apologize. <laughs> no, it's true. I haven't. I'm on Weight Watchers and I have to count my points and, uh, I'm scared that they watching me right now. I don't know where the fuck they at and shit. I gotta always count my points. I had a turkey burger today at like six points, no bread, that's another four points. Half a piece of cheese, that's two points, you know? Cause I wanna suck dick later and that's 10 points. So I could be careful what I do. That's what it does, you know? Cause like, listen, no guy wants to hear, listen, don't come in my mouth. I don't have enough points today. Put it in this cup. <laughs> and I'll have it tomorrow for breakfast. Yeah, I'm single. Oh, all my girlfriends are married now. My last girlfriend that was single just got married, and I didn't think it was gonna happen to her because she's unattractive. And no, ladies, it's nothing like seeing a marginal bitch walk off into happiness, knowing that the night before you had to kick your two cats out of the room so you could masturbate. This is where, where my life is. My grandmother tried to be positive, but she's like, oh, I'm, I'm praying about you being single. I'm keeping you in prayer. I put you on the prayer list at church. I was like, bitch, can you get my pussy off the prayer list at church? I don't, I've been praying over my pussy. I don't know what they're praying about. You know what I mean? Cause they can't ask God to get me a big dick. That's what I need, a big dick, okay? I don't need, I need security. That's what I need, a big dick. 
it's rough out here. I'm trying to be like, I want to be more like a lady. You know what I'm saying? You look like a lady. You look very demure. You smiling and shit. That helps. No, you're cute. You're very rapeable. That's what I want to be like, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, not me. I'm not. I'm like a thug. You know what I mean? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how to be dead. Like, <laughs> like, I want to be, when they have that Taken movie again, when that bitch gets kidnapped again, I want to be the bitch on the poster. Like, I want somebody to try, that's why he's with you, because he knows he can rescue you, right? He can't rescue, if you try to pick me up, sir, I will pop both your goddamn kneecaps, okay? <laughs> I want to be a damsel in distress, huh? You know what I'm saying? I want to be in a dark alley at four o'clock in the morning and see some creepy dude, maybe Tom Arnold, down there. <laughs> you know Tom like big bitches, come on now. But I want to know what it feels like to be vulnerable, just to see that guy and get concerned. I want it. But it's not gonna happen to me because I'm rough, okay? Four o'clock in the morning, I'm in an alley with a creepy dude. He's down there going. <laughs> I'm tired of getting put down by men. I got put down by a friend of mine recently. He's like, I don't know, three foot 11. I don't know what the fuck he is. It's, He's not a midget, I can't call him a midget, I don't wanna call him a little person, he's like a popple or some shit, I don't know what the fuck he is. We're sitting on the couch and he says to me, you know, we've been friends for seven years and I think I'm falling for you. Now, he's already a little motherfucker down here, so I didn't want him to, you know, break his neck and shit because he's little and shit, so I was like, well, don't fall too hard, you know what I'm saying, motherfucker? But like, okay, and I'm thinking to myself, I don't really like this guy, but I don't wanna, you know, whatever, hurt his little feelings and shit, he might kill him. So, um, I'm thinking to myself, like, how can I put him down? But before I can even get to that, he goes, but you're not my type. <laughs> and I'm looking at this little thing. Like, you have a fucking type? You're a fucking midget. You don't get a goddamn type, okay? You get type 2 diabetes and that's it, all right? But that's how men are. Look at you, sir. You're with this gorgeous woman. Look at you. You're, you're, you're all right. But you know what I'm saying? You could have did better. You know what I'm saying? like that when you we're gorgeous look at you bitch look at you bitches gorgeous and look what y'all with look at these motherfuckers <laughs> stepping around here like fucking peacocks like you so goddamn it this little motherfucker i said listen motherfucker okay what the hell is your damn type i was confused he says well i like light-skinned girls with long hair and light eyes i said well motherfucker that's a goddamn unicorn to your ass <laughs> you start with fat bitches and work your way down bitch from plenty of fish and you realize, oh, I get it. Cause all you motherfuckers been thrown back into the goddamn pond. <laughs> I went on this one website called Nude Africa. <laughs> she been on it, yes, girl. <laughs> you gotta put your titties out on Nude Africa. It, it, this is the thing, I, like, you know, ugh. I got big titties, like they just, they don't do the, you know, you got cute titties. They like, you know, you take your bra off, they probably sing like a little mermaid or some shit. <laughs> Right, you can kiss them because they right up there. Like if you take my bra off and my titties fall out, they look like Ricola horns, okay? <laughs> no, seriously, I got two cats that get confused every time I take my bra off because they think it's a scratch toy. They don't know what the fuck is going on. <laughs> and you don't hear the Little Mermaid when my shit come out. You hear good times and old Negro spirituals. That's what happens. <laughs> so I gotta take a picture of my breasts, you know, to get them out there for the internet. And you know, you gotta. Phone, okay, I'm not professional. Like right, 45 minutes, you gotta get the nipple up. <laughs> you 
listen, I got huge areolas, okay? Um, so I took a picture of my titties. It didn't look like a titty. It looked like Gary Coleman and shit. So I put my titties up there. I had this guy come over to my house from New Africa. We started making out on the couch. Now, I am a big bitch and my titties sweat. So what I do is I throw talcum powder underneath there to catch the moisture. So the dude comes over to my house, starts making out with me. He lifts up my titties and all these powder crumbs come falling out on the couch. And he don't really know me, but I'm too embarrassed to tell him it's powder crumbs. So I just told him it was cocaine and I tried to sell it to him for $20. You guys have been so awesome. Thank you. For more laughs on Access TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, Michael Somerville is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs right now. All right, he's been on the Late Show with David Letterman, Michael Somerville. <laughs> Indeed, thank you all very much. I uh, had a good day today. I officially gave up on my New Year's resolutions. Yeah, I was gonna train for a marathon, and today I was like, no, I'm not. <laughs> Celebrated with some nachos. <laughs> my brother told me I gotta set manageable goals. He's like, why don't you just like plan to lose 10 pounds this year? I said, I can do that. I don't even need to start till October. <laughs> Very doable. I do, I gotta start the diet though. You know it's time to diet when you unbutton your pants and the zipper opens itself. That's, that's the point where it's. Although I find my definition of being in shape is changing as I get older. Like when I was 18, I wanted to look great when I was naked. Now I just want to look good when I'm dressed. I think eventually I'll be happy to look fine from a distance in the dark. We really are resistant as a population to losing weight, right? It's not that hard. Any doctor will tell you, just eat right and exercise, and we're all like, mm. <laughs> What else you got? <laughs> and you gotta, they gotta work out. I've never been a fan of manual labor in general. Women are always like, your hands are so soft. What's your secret? I don't use them. <laughs> we do that. And people make assumptions because of my size. My friend was like, you're a big guy. You wanna help me move? <laughs> Oh, well, you're fat. You want to make me dinner? <laughs> I am deceptively weak for my size. I'm tired when I wear a heavy jacket. <laughs> Never been good with my hands. Can't fix anything. I bought a new printer because my old one ran out of ink. <laughs> but when you're a man and you can't do stuff, you don't admit it, right, guys? We're too proud. My girlfriend's car got a flat tire. I was just like, I think we should see other people. <laughs> there <laughs> cuz I'm a guy but I'm not sure I'm a man like I don't like I can't bench press my weight I don't think I could bench press my height honestly I don't... but this is a good time to be a little pathetic as a guy right you can get away with it just say you're sensitive everyone has to accept it if I was born 500 years ago I'd have been screwed and the men are going to hunt for dinner and I'd be like what are the women doing I can help set the table that's why this is a good job for me. Low impact. <laughs> Plenty of rest. If you're not getting enough sleep, you should become a comedian. This is all I have to do today, and then I'm going back to bed. <laughs> I've only been up for an hour. I just love sleep, right? It's the best thing on the planet. Get so proud of myself, right? Yeah! You didn't even clap for me when I came up, but you're clapping for sleep. I love it. I, get, I just love myself after a good sleep. I walk around beaming. Everyone's like, you fall in love. No, I slept 14 hours. <laughs> People think we're lazy sleeping. Oh, that's hard. Sometimes I wake up sweating. <laughs> wow, I was really trying. <laughs> I'm just not used to sharing my bed. That's the adjustment, right? You grow up sleeping alone. You get good at it. You get in a relationship. You got a whole other person on the mattress. My girlfriend now, we don't live together because we're Catholic, but... <laughs> But she sleeps over sometimes because they're not that Catholic. <laughs> she sleep over. She won't even ask. She'll just curl up next to me. And I'm like, can I help you? <laughs> I want to sleep like spoons. And I want to be the only utensil in the drawer. 
And then she complains, I'm cold, go home. She's a morning person. They are the worst. First time she slept over, she got up at 5 a.m. Started making coffee. I thought she was sleepwalking. I go to the bathroom. She assumes I'm up for the day. Hey! How did you sleep? I'll tell you when I'm done. This is just halftime. Because this is what I do. I stay up late. I sleep in. She's always telling me what she did to make me feel like I missed something. 6 a.m. I went for a run. I had the whole park to myself. It was magical. Oh, yeah. Well, at 6 a.m. I was a pirate. <laughs> and ladies, when we do finally get up, you got to give us time to warm up, right? Just because a man is standing does not mean he's ready to speak. She wants to discuss her dreams. Like, I had a dream about you. Do you have a dream about me? Supposed to be honest, right? I was like, I don't think that was you. I mean, I <laughs> you know, she's very sweet, though. Everyone wants to know if she's the one, though. That's what they all ask. You get in that relationship, is this the one? Have you met the one? I don't know. How are you supposed to know, right? There's three billion women in the world. I've dated seven of them. <laughs> Statistically, I doubt it. It's just a... You say you're supposed to marry your best friend. I don't know how Mark's going to feel about that. <laughs> I was reading an article about marriage. It said the man should spend three months' salary on an engagement ring. And as a comedian, I was like, who picks the months? <laughs> if it's this year, she's getting a ring pop, because that's not going to be... But it changes your life, though. You get in that relationship, right? I think relationships change the man's life more than the woman's life, too. You ladies still do the same stuff. You just make us do it with you. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm eating salads. I own an umbrella. <laughs> Gotta make plans now. I never had plans when I was single. Remember being single? What are you doing Friday? I'll tell you Saturday. <laughs> Gotta talk on the phone. Hate the phone, right guys? Phone for information. Tuesday, two o'clock, goodbye. <laughs> she wants to chat 20 minutes about emotions. How do you feel right now? <laughs> Suddenly I'm stressed. <laughs> uh, last week she got mad. You never called me for no reason. You're welcome. Uh, so what do we have, guys? About four minutes of phone time in us? <laughs> and then we're just like, I'm, I'm out of stuff. <laughs> you gotta let me live longer so I have more to report. <laughs> There's too much technology. You can't hide anymore. Guys like disappearing for a few hours off the grid, right? But now everyone's checking us in on Facebook and Twitter. Women are tagging their men like deer. <laughs> You can't hide. Hey, baby, I'm at work. No, you're not. I'm watching you on Google Earth. <laughs> There's cameras everywhere you go, man. That's the best thing that ever happened to women. There's cameras everywhere. Picture phones. Women love their pictures. Now they can take them every six seconds. We gotta take a picture. Why are we taking a picture? Because we're going out. <laughs> six minutes later, it's time for the picture. <laughs> what now? We're actually out. I know why you ladies like pictures, because you look good in them. You know your angles, your little picture face. Every woman, as soon as that camera's about to go off, suck it in, put them out. Ooh! <laughs> Guys never got that memo, right? We're sitting there like trolls. <laughs> Takes it comes back all purple and bloated. Were you choking? What happened to you? <laughs> so you just gotta have fun, right? That's the key. Have fun in your relationship. Marilyn Monroe said if you can make a woman laugh, you can make her do anything. <laughs> Not true. <laughs> My girl asked what I liked about her. I said, I like your butt. She got mad. Why can't you give me a grown-up compliment? I don't even know what that is. I, I admire your low cholesterol. I, uh, I like physical compliments. I said, what do you like about my body? She said, I like the back of your neck. <laughs> she picked the one part of my body I've never even seen before. So I just try to be romantic. I try to be a good lover. That's a lot of pressure on men. Women think we don't care. You guys just want to have... No, we care, ladies. I've always been very conservative when it comes to sex. I've never had a one-night stand. I'm not just going to give this away. I, I... <laughs> Wasn't supposed to be that funny, lady, all right? <laughs> My buddy's got the crazy stories. He's always like, dude, met this chick, went home, we broke the bed. I was like, how much did she weigh? <laughs> 
No, she was crazy in bed, crazy. Never understood what that means to be crazy in the bedroom. Was she aggressive or did she pretend to be Winston Churchill? <laughs> But you ladies are getting a little nuts, you gotta admit, it's all, I don't know if it's internet or there's 50 shades. My, my girlfriend bites in the bed, she'll bite my body in the bedroom. Ah, 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 ah. What the fuck is that? Last week she bit my nipple? That hurts. She's like, it turns me on. Yeah, well, bite your own nipple. All right, listen, I'm Michael Silverville. Thank you guys for coming out. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. What? Yes, 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 yes. Oh, my God. This was so fun. This is so much fun. Thank you. Thank you, Gotham Comedy Live. Thank you, guys. Got a lot of new friends here. Yeah, yeah, you guys were amazing. Why don't we bring up the comics? Come on up here, comics. They're amazing. Chris Monte, Alon Altman, Yabasika, Son, Michael Somerville. Future Mrs. Arnold right here. Number five. Thank you guys, you were great. Great job. Everybody.